Today we're in New York hanging out with Matt Horanik. Matt is the men's style editor for Condé Nast Traveler. Matt has developed a reputation over the years of producing beautiful and inspiring content relevant to any guy. Matt is a photographer, he's an outdoorsman, and he's a watch guy. Today, we're going to get to know Matt a little bit better and hear some really great watch stories. I'm Matt Horanik. Uh, I'm here in Brooklyn, New York. I wear a lot of different hats. One of my favorite hats that I'm wearing right now currently is the men's style editor at Condé Nast Traveler. What's great at Traveler is I handle the luxury watch market, which um, has exposed me to the most wonderful things and great people. And I was watch obsessed anyway, so it was a perfect transition for me to kind of leave the production end of things, photography and film, and go into the more curatorial magazine editing senses of things. You know, I grew up hunting and fishing. My dad shot semi-pro or aggressively amateur trap. So a lot of my youth was at a ski and trap range. And I always found that those guys who loved beautiful classic cars always loved beautifully made shotguns and they always had great watches on their wrists. It just was it. All these objects kind of all spoke in the same note, which was this beautiful design that had amazing function, right? Cars, in this case shotguns, and watches. Okay, so this is a Sears Winnie the Pooh watch that I just got the story on actually recently after 40 some years, right? My grandmother bought it out of the Sears catalog and gave it to me for I think my fifth or sixth birthday. And I have a confession to make, I was obsessed with Winnie the Pooh, I wasn't a Mickey Mouse guy. And it just seemed like the perfect transition for her and also like the idea that every boy needs a wristwatch, like that was just the mentality of a generation, right? This watch sat in a box for years, and I asked my mom, like, where is that Winnie the Pooh watch? And she said, oh, it's right here. So when I saw her last, she gave it to me, and it just brought back this wave of emotion and memory of, like, how this thing, this mechanical object, kind of shaped my aesthetic towards and love for wristwatches. The next watch that really shaped my life was this date chest right here. This is from the early 80s. This was my father's watch. So there was, uh, I remember at the trap range one time there was this guy that my dad really admired, older guy. And I remember he had a two-tone date Rolex on. And I remember my dad saying like, see that watch right there? That's a Rolex. And when my business really excels and you know, I'm gonna reward myself with one of those because that is the watch, right? And as a kid, you're just like, particularly when you're looking up at this guy who you admire so deeply, your father, you're like, okay, I'm relaxed. He's like embedded in your DNA at that point, right? One day I came to my dad's studio, which was a little studio in a basement of our house. It's like graphic design and sign painting studio. And there on his wrist was this watch. And he didn't even say anything. He just kind of like, sort of like when a, a good friend who's female gets engaged and all of a sudden that ring is like in your girl, you know? Like that watch was just there. And I was like, wow. So when this watch was left to me, I remember my mom giving it to me and it sat in the box and it was just like, God, am I, I don't, I'm not worthy of wearing it. I was in college, freshman. And I was just like, I don't know if I can wear this thing. Like I know what it meant to him in this journey to acquire this object and the power of what that meant. And I felt like I had fast-tracked it in the, in the cheapest way and lost someone so special to me. And, you know, and then that started changing because there was this deep connection to this thing that every time I wore it, I was closer to the idea of who he was and what he represented. And then I found my, my pacing with it that way. And still, I only wore it in special occasions. And then, then when I finally moved to New York, I wore it all the time. And I remember I got a oyster bracelet for it, you know? But every time I wear this watch, there's a connection. And out of all these things in my life, this is the most important one. If I ever lost that, I mean, I would just be devastated. I could lose the Pooh watch way before I could lose this one. This is a cool story. First of all, I just love date just or dates, 
I just think that these 34 millimeter to 36 millimeter watches, for me, I have a small wrist, are just so incredible, so affordable, beautiful, right? This watch I had with me on a trip to Europe, and I went to go visit Beretta, which was a, the gun manufacturing in the north of Italy, and I just was like, this is the coolest place I've ever been. Like, there I really felt the power of my father because he was a big Beretta fan. And I have his, I have the first Beretta that he ever purchased, which is a silver snipe that I've had restored and it's very precious to me. And I got there and I was just like overwhelmed. We go in the engraving room and to watch these guys engrave is just like the most magical thing ever. All freehand, all via some sketch. And I was like, oh my God, can they engrave the case back on this watch? Now this was not a very special watch to me. This was kind of a throwaway. It's a cheap watch, but I liked it aesthetically. It, would, it wasn't like my dad's date just or the sub. The master engraver just happened to be there and they were like, ah, of course he can do that for you, you know? And I said, just do MH in whatever font scroll style you want. So he did it in the most traditional way, completely freehand in like 30 seconds and it was the most epic thing. It was like true artistry and craft just melded into one experience and now I can never get rid of this watch. Never, because of that. This is a really clever little funny little watch. I mean, this is the Domino's Air King. I was never a big Domino's pizza fan, but I was fortunate enough to direct a couple Domino's commercials and I really liked the client, I really liked the people a lot and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I like showed my brand loyalty to like show up on set with one of these Domino's watches? And also I like the story, right? Like some brand manager out there, I'm sure I'm messing up this story, but if you were able to meet or exceed your quotas on pizzas, you would get a Rolex. And at the time, Rolex was making custom dials, which they don't do anymore. So I found one of these and got it, and it had the original box of papers and the little note from Domino's, and I wore it on set. And I just was sort of like, I felt so badass, like, yeah. I mean, this is like, this is as close as me getting a Domino's tattoo, basically, to say like, you know, really love you guys, keep me busy. But I love this watch, I wear it, I love the size, and I think that in terms of collecting quote, which I don't really see myself as an aggressive collector, this is a great piece to have because of the story that it tells within the kind of idea of Rolex's history. Like, they will never do this ever again. And they probably did it for just a couple companies, like Coca-Cola included. But the fact that you have the ultimate high-low you know, this incredible, beautiful Swiss watch brand and like drunken nights in the dorm room, Domino's, perfect. Guys should be wearing watches, right? It's like, one thing that drives me nuts about electronic things is every time I want to use it, it's dead. This thing doesn't die, right? That's one reason. But also I think in terms of like the wristwatch kind of defines who you are on many levels. I think it's very important on how it connects you to the idea of heirloom and how you receive that and what that means to you, at least the potential, or you kind of start your own history with the heirloom. Like someday my daughter will have all of these and I hope she makes a wise choice. But I just think that the wristwatch is something that kind of defines you as a guy. I think the long and short of it is they're amazing objects. They're these wonderful little machines that sit on your wrist that define who you are or who you want to project yourself to be. They're wonderful objects and they'll never be replaced by some piece of electronics for me.